Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock's Eyes. Welcome to my channel. It is a dark and stormy day, even though I look bright on camera, because I actually have the blinds up because it's so dark outside. Um, but I kind of like the ghosty effect, because in this video I'm going to talk about growing up in a haunted house, so I'm tell some stories from my childhood. Um, there may be thunder and lightning, so that will kind of all go along with the, the Halloween energy of this video. Okay, so I grew up in a haunted house. Um, I grew up in San Francisco, California in an old Victorian. Um, and my generation was the fourth generation on my mother's side of the family to live in that house. Oh, I'm getting really ghosty looking. I'm gonna keep it this way because it's just kind of fun with the Halloween theme. Um, so from as far back as I can remember, I always sent spirits in the house. I saw things, I heard things, and I wrote down a little list of things that I could remember right now um, that I experienced. I definitely one time saw my grandfather's ghost. So this was a grandfather um, who moved in with us, my dad's dad, after my grandmother passed away. I went to close the blinds on the front door and I think it was about 10, 11 years old. And I saw his ghost walk up the stairs as if he was just coming home from somewhere. Um, that could have just been an energy imprint. Um, it could have been his ghost revisiting, but I didn't sense that it came inside. So knowing what I know now, I think it was an energy imprint of my grandfather just walking home, just coming home. And he was wearing his long trench coat and his hat with the feather in it that he wore. Um, but it freaked me out. <laughs> it really freaked me out. Um, I'm okay sensing ghost spirits, um, seeing things with my mind's eye, <laughs> sort of okay hearing things, but I'm not all that crazy about seeing things with my two physical eyes because it throws me into like a freak out panic. Um, so I kind of put the energy out there that, you know, if I'm to pick anything up, uh, that I pick it up. In those other ways. I don't want to see things if it's gonna freak me out. <laughs> so I definitely once saw my grandfather's ghost. Now there were several times um, that I heard voices talking and it's usually when I was playing in the backyard and we had this sort of light well that went against some windows. So a light well is just an open space so light can get into windows that normally wouldn't get a lot of light. And I remember playing there with my brother or my sister or whoever, and it's one of the windows that went to one of the basement rooms, which later on, after we remodeled, became my bedroom. Um, but I would hear voices. And it would sound like, um, like in Charlie Brown cartoons, Snoopy cartoons, the, the voices of the teachers and parents, like that's what it sounded like. But like I would hear full conversations like that. Um, of course, going I couldn't understand what they said, but I was hearing spirit voices. And I think back in the day, so the house, even though it's been in the family for well over a hundred years or more. Um, there's two levels. So a Victorian flat, there's two residences. There's the upstairs and the main level, and then there's a basement level. And um, my family mostly lived at the top level until my generation or my parents. Um, and the lower levels were rented out. So I don't know who those voices were. I think it was just people who had rented, lived there. It could have been the architect who built the house because I think he actually lived there a few years before my great aunt and uncle, great, great, great aunt and uncle moved in. Um, but I don't know who the voices were, but several times I would hear those voices. However, when the basement had been remodeled and then I had my own room down there, um, I didn't hear those voices then. But I think because I knew about them and I sort of blocked it, sort of like, the way like seeing ghosts kind of freaks me out. Um, at that time, I, I would have been, I don't, I don't want to hear this. I, I would have blocked it. Now that ghosty sound in the background is my baby. She's playing with her toys. <laughs> okay. Um, other things that I experienced. Oh, 
there was a corner in the house. So Victorians have these long, long hallways. And the hallway would go straight, and then there'd be a little nook, and then it would go straight again. And in that nook was the corner. So, you know, if we were bad kids, we had to go stand in the corner. But that corner <laughs> often had a shadow figure. I don't know if it was a shadow spirit or just I would pick up a shadowy energy of a ghost there. Now, later on, um, when I lived in the house again, uh, 2013 to 2015 or so, um, one time I was walking out of the house with the dogs to walk them in the morning. And as I passed by that corner, I heard a voice say, hello there. And that freaked me out. <laughs> I just thought love and light, love and light. I could feel it following us to the door, got to the door, lock. It didn't come through the door and follow us out. I was just like, ugh. Okay, so then I just had to ground myself before I got back home so the energy wouldn't disturb me. Um, but there's definitely that corner. Now across from that corner, when I was a child, there was a linen closet with a like built-in drawers and stuff and a window that went to this larger light well that was between the two houses because Victorians are very close together. There are, there's a little space and those are the light wells so light can get into some of the windows and light the house even though they are kind of dark. That light well, that closet, and that light well area um, always had this interesting energy when I was a child. I would go into that closet and I thought I was pretending, but I think I was just picking up on the energy that there was a portal there because I felt like I would go in there and I could go to other places. And over the years, and as an adult, and then when I, you know, lived there for a few years, a couple years. Um, I definitely experienced a lot of things happening in that area of the house. There's definitely some sort of portal. And I can make another video on stories about that um, as an adult. Um, but this is really, I grew up in a haunted house. I want to talk about childhood stuff. Um, what else do I have here? Oh, things like doors would open by themselves. Doors that had like the push push lock in the little in the handle, they would pop open on their own and open up. Phones would get unhooked. Um, electronics in that house are a pain in the butt. And I I call it the electronics gremlins in the house. Um, you can call them maybe brownies, little trickster spirits, but any electronics there, there's constant problems. I mean, when I was a child, a lot of it was phones getting unhooked, phones coming off the hook, and then you hear that sound of an old phone being off the hook. Um, but electronics actually getting unplugged sometimes, things just not working, internet was a pain in the butt there because it's always going in and out. So just a lot of energy disrupting the electronics and when I was a little girl like sometimes that energy would be really intense and maybe I was just picking up spirit energy but I called it hearing electricity so I used to I mean I still do but most places I don't pick up on that unless I'm in a really haunted place or a place with a lot of spirit energy going on um, but yeah I would I would say ooh, I hear the electricity and often, interestingly, it would be around the section of the house where that light well, that portal, that portal is. Um, what else do I have here? Oh, bookcases would fall over. Usually around my mom, and that may have, may have had to do with some of her energy. But um, yeah, heavy bookcases full of books. No earthquake. I know it's earthquake zone. There would be no earthquake, but cases would just fall over. And I think they would happen when there was a lot of disruptive energy in the house, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, because that attracts energies, entities that feed off of that. And with what I call the portal in the house, you know, energies and entities come and can come and go very easily. It's not a house that you could just try to clear the energy that you can work with a spirit that's hasn't passed on, that's struggling to move on. It's like 
it's an active zone, a very active zone. Um, what else did I put down here? Oh, there was one time, uh, actually, I think it was like three times. We'll say two to four, because I'm not positive. But there were a few times, we'll say, when my parents actually had psychic and paranormal investigators come to the house to figure out what was going on. And from what I know, because I wasn't in the room with them, but I was actually eavesdropping um, <laughs> as best I could through the heating vent, um, that they had some ideas of stuff that was going on, but they didn't have a definite answer. And I think it's because there's just so much going on in that house. Um, but everyone was aware of it. And yeah, I think my parents tried to find some sort of solution. I don't know if anyone cleared the house, though there was once or twice when my dad had a priest come to bless the house. Um, I don't know if it was technically sort of like exercise the house, um, but it was to bless the house to keep spirits away. But again, it's a very active space. Again, there's a portal or you call it a vortex where spirits can come and go. Um, I think that has to do with the location where the house is built. And there's a lot of energy there. So if you look up the street, you see Twin Peaks right there. So those of you who are familiar with San Francisco, Twin Peaks are these twin mountains. They're like five, 600 feet. So they're not huge, but they're, they're the, it's a landmark in San Francisco and there's a big tower on it and, and so on. Um, but there's a lot of energy up there. And I believe the Native Americans, I believe it was the Ohlone Indians or Ohlone Native, Native Americans, it's O-H-L-O-N-E, Ohlone. Um, they would do rituals up there or whatever their sacred rituals were. And there have been times when I was living there as an adult, and I used to get up at like five to walk the dogs, that I noticed on some full moons, maybe even new moons, that I would hear what sounded like Native American chanting coming from the hills. And the streets in San Francisco with the very tall Victorians are sort of like sound tunnels. And so sound can carry through. And so I don't know if those were actual people up there chanting, but I would see some lights up there too, or if it was spirits, I'm really not sure. And I thought about going up there one morning on a full moon when I heard it to explore, um, but it would be quite a hike with the dogs. So, um, I never did it. I thought I would just let it be. So those are some of my stories from my childhood um, about the haunted house. Anything else I want to say? Doors opening, phones unhooking, electronic gremlins, bookcases falling. Oh, faces on the ceiling. When I was very small, when all the kids, or three of us, in one bedroom still, so before the basement was remodeled, and I'd go to bed. Sometimes I would hear what sounded like wind swirling in the room, but the windows would be closed. And sometimes I would see what I thought were faces on the ceiling. And it would scare me, like ghostly faces. Um, so that's another experience that I remember very vividly from my childhood growing up in a haunted house. Okay, did you grow up in a haunted house? Let me know in the comments below your experiences of hauntings or ghosts and spirits. Um, and if you'd like to hear more about what I experienced and I guess discovered or feel confidently I have discovered about um, the portal in the house. So it's definitely connected to the land though. It's not like if you tore down the house, I think it would still be there. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. No thunder and lightning, so I was kind of hoping for it for the video. It would have been really good. Um, thank you for stopping by, liking, sharing, and subscribing, and I'll see you back here soon.